Today I'm going to talk about a smart garage door opener that I can honestly say everybody should have if you're interested in controlling your garage away from home. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And in today's video, I wanna talk about a new smart home garage door opener. Now this new device is made by a company called Miros. Miros. I'm really terrible at pronouncing names, so I'm just gonna go with Miros. Now before I go any further, I do wanna give a full disclosure here. Not only was this product sent to me for free, but this is also a paid video, which means I consider this to be more of a product overview. I'm going to show you some installation, some usages of the apps rather than a product review. But me being me, I can't help but to give my opinion on certain products. So I am going to be injecting some of my opinions in this video. And that is again, the Miros Smart Garage Door Opener. Now this is the product SKU MSG 200, codenamed Kali. Now going along the lines of being a smart home controller, this works with all the major things like Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant, smart things. One thing that you don't notice on the box, however, is the HomeKit logo, which initially kind of had me a little worried because Miras does offer a lot of other smart home products and I am actively looking for some sort of an ecosystem to really dive like, you know, head first into and a lot of their other devices do support HomeKit. So when I didn't see the logo on this, for a moment, I kind of thought, okay, it doesn't integrate with HomeKit at all. I was wrong. More on that later. Now the Maras Collie can support up to three garage doors at the same time from a single unit. However, the original packaging only comes with enough to control one. So if you have more than one garage door, you will have to order additional these packets right here in order to hook up other garage doors. In my particular case, I have one double wide garage door and then one single garage door, total of two. So let's talk a little bit about this Maras Kali device. It runs off a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It has an external antenna that actually has proven to have really good connection to my Wi-Fi network in my home. Its garage door opener support is 200 different brands with like 1600 different models and just by any chance you do happen to have maybe an older brand or an off brand that's not supported they do also offer accessories that they can send to you to allow it to work on your garage door opener it is web connected through the Maras app that allows you to open and close your garage doors from anywhere in the world where you have internet connection and it comes built in with a bunch of different notifications like telling you when you open up your garage when the garage closes and even telling you if you open your garage and it stayed open for too long, which is like really great if you leave for work and forget your garage door open and then you get a pop-up that says, yo, someone's about to steal your stuff. And because it is smart controlled, you can control it with your voice, assuming you have something like a Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or Siri. Of course, Apple, which is what I use, and I don't use a passcode on my phone. So in order for me to do it, it I have to set up a passcode, which kind of irritates me. I don't know why they, I mean, yeah, security. First, you'll have to set up a passcode on your iPhone. Then I'm happy to help you secure your home. Yeah, you know what? Not Maras's fault. That's an Apple thing, kind of aggravated. I hate passcodes, doesn't matter, moving on. So let's start off with what you get in the box. Of course, you get the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi controller, the Akali device, MSG 200. And of course, you get the cabling that you needed to run to not only your garage door opener, but also to the sensors that are included in the box. This is what tells your device whether or not your garage door is open or closed. It comes with a USB power adapter and a USB power cable in order to power this thing on. It even comes with a little test wire, which could be handy if you're not really sure your, your garage door opener can handle handle this sort of device without needing another accessory. And plenty of screws, which I didn't use any because I installed my garage door opener sensors a little bit different than probably what you should. Basically, this isn't my first rodeo when it comes to installing sensors. So I've learned a little bit as I've went along and I know what doesn't work for my garage door. So 
I tried something different this time and it's worked out really great. As far as what comes in the add-on box, this is literally just, you know, two wires kind of zip tied together. They plug directly into the back of the unit and this expands your unit to open up another garage. So again, I have two garage door openers. I needed this in order to get both of them to work. If you guys don't know, I've reviewed the MyQ and a system by Nex, both of which only controlled my main garage door. So I was kind of excited to have something to control both doors. Not that I need it, just something cool. So let's say you wanna get into smart home garage door controlling. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go onto their website or Amazon page and check the compatibility of your garage door opener. Now, since this device handles so many different brands, so many different models, chances are if you have a garage door opener that's relevant in the last, I don't know, decade or two, it's probably going to work. But just make sure before you go ordering this that it is compatible. And for whatever reason, if you find that either through Amazon or on their website, it's not supported, you can contact them with your model and they will send you an accessory. But if all checks out, you get that ordered and we move on to step two. Because this is a smart device and I don't wanna go through the installation process just to have something go wrong, the first thing that I did was actually set it up on this desk and power it on. And that allowed me to pair everything to make sure that everything was connected. That way, when I go to install it, all I gotta do is power it on. I don't have to worry about, you know, pushing buttons or unplugging or doing anything else just in case that came up. Thankfully though, after I downloaded the Moras app, I was able to very easily pair it to my phone. Hashtag, asterisk, whatever. You know how I said this thing doesn't say Apple HomeKit on the front? It actually does have Apple HomeKit, which means the setup process is slightly different. Because Apple recognized it, it automatically went directly into HomeKit setup. It kind of bypassed the app altogether. So when I got everything initialized and I went to connect to the Wi-Fi that this device was giving off, HomeKit just kind of st stepped in. I was like, nope, let's set it up through HomeKit. This is it. Then I go back to the Moras app, I force restart it, and then it like shows up as just an unregistered device. It allows me to easily add it into the app from there. So if you have Apple, you might have to take kind of a weird step to get that going. The opener itself does have a QR code on the back that will assist you with setting it up through the app. So that is super convenient. And this is pretty common for most smart devices. Once I got everything paired, I also wanted to test the sensors. This was actually a big issue for me back in the day when I installed the Nex opener. It required a wired sensor and it had to be super close in order for the sensor to pick up each other. So what I did was hook up the app, lay it here, have the device all powered on, and I just inched the sensor closer and closer and closer until it registered it as being closed, which turned out to be and I wanna go with like one and a half to 1.75 inches away and it registered at it as being closed. I definitely recommend you do this yourself just so you can has, have a visual representation of how far the sensors have to be from each other in order to be registered. This is gonna help you during installation. Once all that is done, you're ready for step three and that is testing it with your actual garage door opener. Now there's two main cables tied together that plug into the device. One cable goes to your garage door opener device itself, the other goes to the sensor. So to test this out, you are gonna have to plug in the wires into the spots where your normal garage door opener button goes into. You can usually easily identify this because it's one main cable coming from the ceiling and it's like, you know, straight up copper and it just jabs right in. There's usually a red and a white one. The cables you see here is red and black, but just plug the red one into the red one and the black one into the white one and you're ready to test. After you plug in the device, of course. So get everything hooked up into the garage door opener. Don't worry about the sensors just yet. Power up the device, load the app and press open and see if your garage door is opened. If everything opened up as expected, then you are ready for step number four. Here you wanna locate the best possible location to hook up the sensors needed to register that door as being opened or closed. Now, again, circling back to previous installations where I had these sensors, I try to put it at the very top of my garage door. I position it to where it was as far as possible away from each other. That way when the garage door opened and kinda of you know, kind of came off a little bit, it would miss the sensor. But when it closed, it would get a good connection between those sensors. The problem that I ran in with was change of temperature. 
When the temperature changed, the door changed, it flexed a little bit differently. And then one day I went to open up my garage and it just snapped that sensor right off. And the sensor wires that come with the device are actually a little bit too short to run all the way down your cable uh, system and then over to the side of the garage and then hook up to the side of the garage. I tried it, it was just a little bit too short. And at this point in the game, I really didn't feel like splicing in and adding cable length to this installation. So I got creative. The metal railing that controls everything, I thought to myself, why don't I just use a few nuts and bolts that I have, nut and bolt it up to it, and then because it's magnet and has a sticker, I can have the sticker on the little metal piece. And this entire setup worked amazing for me. I've opened up my garage door probably a hundred times just trying to see if this thing would not work as intended, but it keeps working, it's reliable, it's close enough, it's just, it, it was a great setup for me. If you are gonna go this route, definitely take notice to where the chains are for your garage door opener. Last thing you wanna do is start slicing through and ruining cables because you just wrap it around a chain or something. So using that one inch to one and a half inch sensor range, I got everything hooked up to where when it closes, it just perfectly aligns with that other sensor and it instantly recognizes that it is closed. Once you have the sensors installed on the top of your garage door railing, that metal rail that has all of the chain links and everything, there should be a little cable channel that you can easily shove the cable for the sensors into and run it all the way up to your garage door opener. Once you get everything hooked up, I definitely recommend, again, testing the system. Open and close your garage a few times. Make sure that it's registering when it's open and when it's closed. If not, you might have to move your sensor closer, readjust it, etc. There's might be something wrong there. And the last thing you want to do is go through all this setup and get everything, you know, nice and tidy and then have to change something and you don't have enough wire. I mean, just test every step. And that brings me to number five tidying up your wires. Now, because the sensor wire was not long enough to go to the side of my garage, but too long to just be one nice clean run to the end of my garage, I did have a little bit of a bundle of wire that I wanted to clean up. Luckily in the box, they do include some cable ties. So that allowed me to basically just kind of bundle everything up, cable tie it together, snip off the extra. And even though it is kind of a nest up there, it is all tidied up. One thing you do want to kind of keep in mind is the location of the Miros device itself. It does have an external antenna, so you don't really have to worry about any kind of interference from the metal on your garage door opener. But I would recommend, again, going back to the chain thing, trying to put it out of the way. That way there's no chance that it's going to vibrate some wires over there and get chewed up. Once you have that placed, once you have your cables tidied up and you test everything and and you're, everything's working, well, that's it. You're good to go. You now have a fully functional smart remote garage door opener that you can open from anywhere in the world. And depending on whether or not you have the proper home kit set up in your house and a passcode on your iPhone, you could even tell Siri to do it for you or Alexa or Google. What I did not touch base on though, is the add-on. And yes, I know this is a sponsored video, but I feel obligated to give a little bit of feedback on this add-on. It's just a couple of wires. That's all this is. It allows you to attach a second garage door opener to the Kali device. So what could go wrong, aside from wires that are slightly too short to be usable? If you have a garage door opener, you have a button in your garage to manually open that garage door. And if you do have this button, more than likely you have a wire that is already running up the metal brackets that handle your garage door up through the ceiling into the attic over to where the garage door buttons are. I used the hole for this wire to run other wires through the attic to go to the other garage door opener because I didn't want wires running all the way on the ceiling, anything like that. I didn't want anything like that that would just look out of place. I mean, especially I'm doing this whole garage remodel thing, you know, that just wasn't gonna cut it for me. Instead, I shoved the wires right up that hole and just took them over to the other garage door. Now, the good thing is, is that the wires that go to the second garage door opener was nearly perfect length, which means I didn't have a lot of spare. It just kind of pulled down, perfectly went in, and I was able to, you know, tidy it up, zip tie it right up the, the railing, and it was out of the way, looked clean, and it, overall was a great experience. The sensor, on the other hand, was a little bit different. I have a feeling that this add-on package is really designed for two garage door openers that are side by side, two single door openers, side by side. This is plenty long enough for an installation of that 
type. However, since I have a double door and then a single door with two garage door openers, I had a little bit of extra ground to cover, which means that I was about three to four feet short on cable in order to hook up the second sensor to my second garage door opener. But that's okay. These are very low voltage sensor wires. So because I didn't have any spare cable laying around, I just took an old DC like power adapter that I wasn't using for anything, snipped it on both ends, got my extra four uh, feet worth of space, and then I just crimped on both lines and just extended that wire myself. After I extended the wire, I ran everything over to the other garage door, drilled a very small hole because I did cut that wire and was able to run it up and not have to have such a big hole, ran it down to the second garage door, hooked it up exactly the same thing as the first door. So now both of my garage door sensors accurately represent when the garage is being opened and closed. Now, one thing that I do want to touch base on is the Moross app. The app itself, yes, does work with your garage door opener. However, Moross has a huge line of products, everything from light bulbs, light switches, plugins, etc., that allows you to smartify your home. Yes, smartify is a word, and I know I touched that. So it has additional things like setting scenes or routines. These are primarily for lights. So I wasn't able to explore any of these features because all I have right now is a garage door opener. But the app itself is meant to control a lot of different things. And since they offer so many products that actually work with HomeKit, gotta be honest, I'm kind of sort of thinking about diving into the whole Moross ecosystem because if this thing proves to be reliable, I might just want to dive in like head first and just, just Full morass, I don't know, maybe. But with all that said, even though this is a sponsored video, I wanna give a couple likes and one or two dislikes of the system overall. The first thing I like about it is that it is completely easy to set up. It's not as easy as the MyQ where it's just all wireless, you don't have to run any wires. So it does take a little bit more time, but you gain a few benefits from actually running wires. Or at least you gain one benefit and that is the response time. And that brings me to the second thing I like about this device is it is quick. I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm on my LTE network on my phone completely away from home. As soon as I click that thing, the garage door opens. It's almost instantaneous, which really kind of surprised me. With the MyQ, there's a little bit of a delay. With the Nex, there was even a bigger delay. But with this system, it's just instant. And I really, really do like that. The second thing I like kind of circles back to what I said about the Moross app is that it does handle other devices. It's meant for their entire ecosystem. A lot of smart things do handle this, but with HomeKit integration, I feel like this could be a very powerful app integrating directly with my phone and something that I want to explore later still a thing that I like. That doesn't mean that it's not perfect. And I've already touched base on this before, but I really think Moross needs to address this or at least offer other options for people. And that is the length of the wires. Now the wires that ran directly up through the attic over to the garage door opener was perfect length for me. The sensor wire, however, because it has to run to the other side of the garage and then over, depending on how people set this up, I mean, it's just not long enough. At bare minimum, I think the sensor wire needs to be an extra four feet because I went directly up to the attic and took a straight shot over to where I was dropping it back down to the other garage door. Four feet minimal, probably eight to 10 feet. I know that sounds excessive, but when you're running wires from one garage door to the other, that eight to 10 feet could make a huge difference. One quick side note though, if you are controlling three garage doors, make sure to install this device in your middle garage door. That way, if you are running those extra wires, it's kind of evenly spread and you can probably easily reach both of those doors very easily just because it's in the middle and they're only single wide garage doors. So overall, I love this system. It controls both of my garage doors. It's super quick. It was not complicated to install. And since I learned from my previous installation as far as where to install sensors, now it is super reliable and not gonna like break on me like my next system did. So guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this system, make sure to post them in the comments down below. As always, more detailed specifications along with current up-to-date pricing is available in the description down below. So thank you for watching, like, and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.